Housing prices are breaking records with the median housing price exceeding $440,000. And just to give you some perspective, 10 years ago, the median housing price was a hair under $250,000. And this is happening today in an environment where the Fed continues to increase interest rates. The question really becomes is, can we expect to see this trend continue? And if we expect to see the trend continue, for how long? And that is what we'll address in this video. But before I get too far into it, don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and let's get into it. Now, there's really two main causes for rising housing prices. One, as we've talked about in other videos, is the supply-demand imbalance. And the second reason why is the strength of the consumer. A reversal in either of these or both of these combined would be a significant problem for the housing market. So let's look at each of these cases individually and determine whether a reversal is likely or not. Starting, of course, with a supply shortage. As reflected in the data, housing starts has had an upward trajectory since 2009. Current levels, though, are definitely a far cry from the peak of housing starts from a few years back. But if we were to drill down even a little bit further, we can see that housing starts more recently have experienced a downward trajectory. Lower housing starts, of course, creates a problem if the demand for houses is high. But if the demand for houses continues to be going at an exorbitant rate, while the supply of homes continues to deteriorate, one can expect to see that the prices of homes will not decline. So the question really becomes is, is the demand for homes coming down? Now, if we were to look at the charts, it would basically indicate that the housing demand has been going up since 2011. And this is really irrespective of whether it's a new home or an existing home. And this trend, while most prolific in the South and the West, is also occurring nationwide across the United States. However, if you were to dig in just a little bit deeper, if you were to zoom in on the data just a little bit deeper, it would basically indicate that housing demand has in fact dropped by about 6% in July. Similarly, mortgage applications have also had a steady decline. The data would suggest that with home applications or mortgage applications declining, the demand for homes is also declining. And of course, this is also reflected with home sales data. So what does this all mean? Well, at a summary level, what this means is both the supply as well as the demand for new as well as existing homes has started to come down. When you actually see the data that the supply and demand curve is coming down, it naturally results in a decline in home prices. And this is basically just economics 101. But the other thing that we also need to look at is a second root cause of what's been driving up the median prices for homes. And that is really the strength of the consumer. We all know that when it comes to employment figures as well as wages, all of that is extremely positive at this point in time. Unemployment levels are right around three and a half percent, which is basically record low levels. Ages similarly are also very high, but of course they're not quite as high as what inflation inflation is. So with wage growth not being as high as inflation, we should naturally see a decline in consumer spending. But are we? Are we really seeing a decline in consumer spending? Quite frankly, that is not what the data is suggesting. In fact, the data would suggest when it comes to retail sales as an example, these numbers are absolutely blockbuster. And while there are certain companies which have had an adverse earnings release off late, such as Walmart as well as Target, this is largely being caused by the excess inventory that they have. And due to that excess inventory, they've had to cut prices, thus eroding some of the margin that they basically produce, which has of course had an adverse impact to stock prices. But with that said, when it comes to actual consumer spending data, whether retail or otherwise, it continues to be very strong. So brass tacks, consumer spending continues to be extremely resilient. And while the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index continues to indicate that people continue to have some level of concern with the overarching state of the economy, that data is really not transferring over to the state of consumer spending. So that really relates to the current state of the economy. And a large part of these data is also backward looking, right? So we're looking at about a month or so in arrears. But with that said, the real question becomes is, can we expect to see this trend continue? Now that is really where the data gets quite a bit more dicey because what the data would suggest is that consumers are borrowing more in order to execute a lot of these purchases. And this is irrespective of rising wages as well as low unemployment figures, which would basically suggest is that the wages are not able to offset the rising prices when it comes to inflation, due to which the consumer is having to borrow to offset that wage inflation differential. While consumers are using their credit cards a lot more, 
we are not really seeing a significant increase when it comes to delinquencies on paying off these credit card debt. In fact, over the last 10 years, the amount of consumer credit card delinquency has actually been on a steady decline. Now, if you were to zoom in on the data a lot further, it would basically suggest that there has been some level of increase when it comes to consumer credit card delinquency as well. But relative to historical averages, this consumer credit delinquency number is not that high. Similarly, if you were to look at auto loan delinquency data as well, that is also not too bad. But with that said, as you zoom into the data, zoom in further and further and look into the period in the last couple of months, there is some level of increase when it comes to all of these delinquency rates. Even when you were to look at things such as foreclosures or if you were to look at home repossessions as well, all of this data would suggest that there is some level of uptick in the last couple of months. But when you look at historical averages or if you look at data over an extended period of time, it would suggest that it is not overtly crazy. It's not like there is a significant amount of this activity that is taking place. So what can we infer from all of these consumer trends? The data would suggest that the consumer continues to be very strong. They continue to be extremely resilient. But with that said, there are clear signs that there are some cracks that are emerging within the system. The way Fed funds rates really operate is that it really works as a slow drip. It starts small in terms of creating an impact and then it quickly balloons into something a lot more significant. So really, what does all this mean for consumer prices? There are definitely cracks within the consumer. We've already talked about that and we've illustrated that with data as well. And we're seeing supply and demand declines that are also emerging within the housing market. Of course, with housing, like most things, location absolutely does matter. It matters quite significantly. And as we talked about earlier in this video, when it comes to the South and the West, they've experienced the highest growth rate when it comes to prices of homes over the last several years. And consequently, these areas are also experiencing some higher increases when it comes to unemployment. These are also areas where more tech companies are really based. And tech companies more recently have been suggesting that increased layoffs will continue. So since these markets have had this engineered increases in prices, one could naturally expect that these areas would also experience perhaps the decline in prices a lot sooner or more significant than the central part of the United States as well as the eastern part of the United States as well. As brass tax said, if you look at the data, it would certainly suggest that a decline in the prices of homes is almost an inevitable outcome. So stock market or housing market pundits are already calling the housing market to be in a recession. But with all of that said, I don't think we can expect to see a significant decline when it comes to prices of these homes because a lot of the consumer data that we specifically focused on in this video have all illustrated like a small decline, a small decline in delinquencies, whether it's housing or autos or credit cards or whatever it might be. They're all experiencing a slow decrease now, of course, if the Fed continues to jack up rates significantly, the, pr the prices for homes will decline a lot faster and more significantly. So what are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you think the prices of homes will come down substantially? Do you think they'll come down just a little bit? Or do you think the prices of homes are actually going to continue to increase from the levels that they are at? Include all of that in the comments below. And if you've made it this far in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next one.